Governments from around the world are in Bali debating how to reduce carbon emissions. But in China, one of the worst polluters, up to 3% of global carbon emissions come from its coal fires, raging in seams across the north. Our China correspondent Lindsay Hilson went to the Wuda coal field in Inner Mongolia and to Arunki in Xinjiang province to investigate. Winter brings snow to Xinjiang in China's far west. But beneath the surface, the heat reaches 1,000 degrees. This is China's coal fire belt, where underground infernos send sulfur, soot and greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Bulldozers rake over the coals, trying to put out the blaze. Every year, China's coal fires are said to produce as much carbon dioxide as all the cars and trucks in America. Some fires started spontaneously hundreds of years ago, but others are sparked by unsafe mining practice as China satisfies its endless hunger for coal. Greenhouse gas emissions isn't just a problem for China. It affects the whole world. The Chinese government is under pressure to reduce emissions. So we firefighters are also under pressure to speed up our work to reduce emissions and environmental damage. They pump water to lower the temperature. Later, they'll force mud and slurry through the cracks in the earth to block the oxygen which keeps the coal burning. It takes months or years to put out a fire, but it may nonetheless be a more efficient way for China to cut emissions than by introducing energy-saving measures. What these men do is really tough. The air is full of dirt and smoke, and fumes from sulfur and other toxic gases. Working near the fire is boiling hot. But the work is really important, because with China's coal fires contributing up to 3% of global carbon emissions, extinguishing them could make a real difference. Geologists monitor an area where a fire has been doused. They collect gas for testing. The fires produce methane and carbon monoxide. They check the temperature, still over 80 degrees. Not until it's under 70 degrees can they say a fire is well and truly extinguished. 1,500 miles away in Beijing, Professor Li Jing is teaching his students about a Sino-German project using remote sensing to identify coal fires. When coal burns underground, the temperature rises on the surface. By using remote sensing imagery, especially thermal infrared technology, which is very sensitive to temperature, we can clearly locate the rising heat and quickly identify the fire area. He's finding that the fires are spreading. In the Wuda coal field in Inner Mongolia, miners scrape the soil to expose a seam. A few meters below, where they've already extracted coal, fires burn unimpeded. So lucrative is coal, and China's demand so great that local authorities often turn a blind eye to illegal or slipshod mines. The situation has worsened in the last few decades. In the 50s and 60s, coal mines were owned and operated by the state. Safety and fire prevention were a big part of a strict management regime, and there weren't many coal fires. But in the last few decades, many private mine businesses appeared, which ignore safety and fire prevention. As a result, we see fires everywhere now. In Xinjiang, the firefighters have made a DVD about the biggest fire, Liu Hango, which they extinguished three years ago. It used to burn up nearly two million tons of coal a year, a huge waste of natural resources, as well as a source of pollution. Now the land's recovering, vegetation's growing back. There's even a monument to thank the firefighters. But a few hundred yards away, we found this, fire burning once again. Here's the reason, tire tracks, and the telltale signs that small-scale miners have come, probably at night, to extract coal. They failed to replace the soil properly, and the fires restarted. Better policing is needed and more money. 
Once we detect coal fires, we need a lot of money to put them out. Private companies only think about profits. Only the state and the Xinjiang government have been putting funds into our work. It's taxpayers' money. Another coal-fired power station, another few tons of climate-changing gas. In Bali, China will come under more pressure to reduce its dependence on coal. Small, inefficient mines proliferate, despite the government's promise to close them down. To help meet its own target of reducing carbon emissions by 20% over three years, the Chinese government plans to extinguish more coal fires. But if they fail to control the way coal is mined, the efforts of the firefighters will be in vain. Lindsay Hilsom, Channel 4 News, Xinjiang.